Well, <clears throat> good morning. Happy hump day. Sorry about the little cough there. Um, we did it. I got on. Uh, uh, I use open-based software, OBS Studio, and it has been giving me fits past couple of weeks. And lo and behold, yesterday, they had a software update that makes connecting to YouTube much easier. They must have heard me grumbling. <laughs> it's, you know, you're supposed to be able to just push one or two buttons and all this stuff works great, right? So not the case lately. But we're going to talk about interest rates today, and we're going to talk about what's going on with our inventory, if we can even try to figure that out. We have 72.42 on the market today. Wednesdays always seem to be the lowest day, and seven-day moving average shows 38.91. Homes came on the market with 36.49 going under contract. Dip below the 300 gap here. That's a difference of 242 with 1,833 price changes. <clears throat> Here's what it looks like, folks. The seven-day moving average uh, looks like more homes kind of hit the uh, recording yesterday. So we dipped up a little bit here, you can see, and then listings kind of came down. And it's getting kind of odd out there. Not really odd, but, you know, you see articles, and I saw one that the title company put on an Instagram post a couple days ago that said, you know, National Association of Realtors said October is the best time to buy a house. That's when you have the most listings, and it's going to be much easier for buyers. And it looked like that in August, uh, but I'm, I'm just not seeing it. I'm not feeling the love here, and you can see why we're stuck. Like I said yesterday, how's the market? Well, we're stuck. We were at 7027, now we're 7006. But here's the interesting thing. Let's look at it historically for a moment. Um, and if we look at active listings by price range, and it goes back, goes back, look here, 2019, in the 25,000 to 50,000 range, we had 37 active listings. In the 200 to 250, we had 2,797. Notice how those lower price ranges just went away. But now, we're sitting at in the 125 to 150 price range, 53 homes. Those are probably like modulars. Everything's going up <clears throat> 250 to 300, the 300 to 400, 400 to 500 going up compared to May, um, you know, substantially, but not up here where we need to be. But then you can see down here in the luxury market that it just kind of makes up the bottom and we're just staying down there. It looks like it consistently always does. It doesn't move up or down much. This one here is 600, 800,000. So we're looking at 1,038 here in uh, September. And then we were looking at 319 in February. Um, so there is some movement, but it's not enough to help those of us that are out there looking for homes, right? And if you're looking to sell, um, it is still looking good for you. Here's, let's just do a little, Go to the Wayback Machine here for just a moment and look at what Realtor.com said for the Housing 21 forecast. Home prices will hit new highs 5.7%. Case Schiller just came out today and said, guess what? It was 19.7%. So they missed that. Uh, seasonality makes a return. No, not seeing that yet. Home sales are going to go up 7%. Nope, they blew that out. Mortgage rates on the move going to be 3.4% by the end of the year. Looks like they're about to get that one right. So we're going to give them some kudos there. And we are seeing mortgage rates right now start to go up. And they've been going up consistently the past couple of weeks. It's nothing alarming. I mean, we're still, you know, in the low threes. In fact, if you look today, it says we're 3.16. Last year, we were 2.98. And if we look at where we were in relationship to yesterday, we're 3.16 today, 3.14 yesterday. They're just going up, tick, 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 ever so slowly. Now, why is that? Well, the Fed chairman has come out and said that although they're not going to raise interest rates, they are going to start pulling back on mortgage-backed security purchases and treasury purchases. And they're doing that at about 40 billion a month in mortgage-backed securities. And so when they pull back in that, the bond market is reacting and saying, well, looks like rates are going up. So they are selling bonds instead of buying bonds. And that makes rates go up. I'll show you a couple charts here on uh, 
on uh, M2 Money Supply too, which tells a very interesting story. So there's nervousness. And, you know, when they pull back on that uh, mortgage-backed securities, which I think is, is warranted because they're overheating the housing market, you're going to see interest rates start to start to go up. And we're seeing that. Um, but there's plenty of arguments out there that show that, that we just can't take a rate increase in our economy right now. And there's a possibility that things may turn around and go down again because there's a whole lot of consuming that's not going on in our market. What do I mean by that? This is M2. This is money supply. This is how many greenbacks are out there in, in our market in the United States. Look at that. So this chart, boom, went flying up after 2020. This is quantitative easing. This is the Fed's increasing their balance sheet and making sure there's plenty of money in the system. And there is historical money in the system. Okay, so Rick, where's the problem? It's right here. Money velocity. We're not, it's not moving. There's not a lot of lending going on. It just plummeted back here in Q4, Q1 of 2020, first quarter, March, stay home, two weeks, flatten the curve. Okay, we did, boom. Nobody's spending anything. The money is not moving. When did money move before? Well, look, it moved quite well here in 1980. See how it was going up? You know, we all felt like we had some money back in the mid 80s and uh, buying houses like crazy and inflation was really bad right about here. So, and that's because we had a lot of money moving, a lot of money in the market. Look at the 90s. Same thing from 91 on up to 97. We all felt like we were doing pretty well back then. Money was moving, a lot of consuming going on. And then we had the dot-com crash, which kind of brought things back down again. But ever since 2006, we have been steadily going down. Now, if you raise interest rates very much, that's not going to improve this graph. And this is what Fed Chairman Powell is really keeping his eye on, is the moving of money. Now, the banks have so much cash that they're sending it back to the Feds to hold on their balance sheets overnight. It's called the uh, reverse repo market. That's a whole nother chart. And they have so much cash that they're saying, here, hold this and give me, I think it's 0.125% interest. And they're not people are not going to the banks to borrow as much as they normally would in an economic recovery. And there is concern that we really don't have um, a recovery, a recovery going on right now, even though in housing, S&P CoreLogic Case Shiller Index reports a record high 19.7% annual home price gain in July. And that is July. So the Case Shiller Index, um, lags so it, it takes them a couple months to put the numbers together and that's what you're seeing in july it has since slowed down but until we get some improvement in these inventory numbers we're going to continue to have pricing pressure so sitting here today with 7200 units when october is supposed to be our month where we're going to see more listings coming on board we've got too many headwinds right now so we have a, a debt ceiling that they're arguing about. People are threatening to shut the government down, stop social security checks. We've got shot mandates that people are quitting over or people are going to get fired over. There's just a lot of bad news out there that needs to go away. And when bad news go away, good things happen. And we're just not seeing listings right now. People are afraid to put their house on the market, not because they're afraid that, you know, somebody's not going to buy it or they don't want to go through the hassle of listing. It's just they don't know where they're going to go after they put that house on. We have to have a sweet spot that says, I'm very comfortable that I can sell my existing home and find another one. And right now, that's the problem. Finding the other one is a bit of a grunt. There just isn't much out there to choose from. So we need some help and something has to happen here. So I'm not confident right now, based on what I'm saying, that uh, shows that the October numbers are going to be great. Uh, I think they're going to be just every bit as sluggish as what we see now. And that's really important to note that as you start seeing these national numbers come out, like Case Schiller from July, that doesn't mean anything now. I mean, it means you've got some equity, that's for sure, but you're looking at numbers that are very lagging. So you need to kind of see what's going on now. And I hope I'm providing that for you by showing you on a daily basis that, and even though we don't need to look at it every day, but you are seeing indications that we're not breaking out like we thought we would. 
and that is uh, going to slow down October, November, December. I'm really concerned that if we've got low inventory going into October, that November, December is going to be a bloodbath. There's just not going to be anything there because people just don't list during the holidays. And I saw an article of all these storage containers in California that are sitting off the coast. They can't get in. There's not enough people to unload these boats. And what's in those storage containers? Your Christmas gifts. <laughs> They're out there in the water just waiting to come in. So there is a real supply chain problem going on. Rates 3.13. Remember that quote is just kind of a national quote. Your lender uh, will have different rates all depending on your credit, your credit score, your debt to income ratio. So don't hold that 3.16 that I just saw as the gospel. It's just a guide. So you can probably find a much better rate. You may find some higher ones. Going from lender to lender and shopping rates is also not a good thing because everybody's going to have a different rate, but it depends on you mostly. So I recommend going with a lending broker that can shop a lot of different lenders to get you the best rate and the best program. And don't forget to look at the points. If you go to some of these national lenders and they go, oh, I can get you 2.75, you have to ask the question, how much is that going to cost me? Could be as high as $7,000. So when you're out there rate shopping, make sure you know what you're looking at. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Take on the week. Happy hump day.